Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. More Newcastle news. Plenty to get into today. A Norwich City coach collides with a Newcastle fan in the stands. Where's the Newcastle director of football? There's more news about Michael and plenty more. But anyway, guys, as always, appreciate your support. If you're new to the channel, make sure you get down and subscribe. Smash like button, enjoy. And uh, in terms of news in the future, it'll always be here on the channel, so you'll be notified. Make sure I put the bell notifications on. Tomorrow will be a live stream on the channel with the weekly news itself. Friday, Gator game, Saturday, fan cams, Burnley at home. Huge days coming up, but anyway, guys, without further ado, let's get into it. First off, let's look at the main story today. A Norwich City coach went into the stand and grabbed any castinated's bag yesterday. Huge kick at the stadium. This is the story as far as I'm aware here. Again, it's just rumoured at this point. I'll show the video in a minute, the actual incident, but... That's pretty much the story there. Someone stole a ball that went to the crowd and the Norwich City coach was very angry and went in to get it. So, But I don't understand that part though because I was at the game and Tim Cole, he was kicking balls into the stands. You could watch Tim Cole, he, was, he would look towards the crowd he would just kick balls into it. So I don't know what's going on there. Again, they're a Premier League club. It's not like a Sunday League team that got a lack of balls. So maybe, I don't know, maybe they had a shortage or something. But it's weird. It's a really weird one there. But without further ado, I'll show the video itself and you guys think what you want. I'll put the clip on the screen now. I've kept the volume out with pretty much the both of them just telling each other the F off loads, really. In terms of the clip itself, though, it's weird. He just goes and he just grabs the guy's bag. I mean, you can't do that. You really can't do that. Yes, he did, to be fair, he shouldn't have took the ball, but you would just tell the straw one. You wouldn't just go in there and grab the guy's bag. He's obviously antagonising the fan. And it's just crazy. It's crazy to see from a coach, uh, from a Premier League team. He must get in trouble for that shoot. Again, though, he probably shouldn't have took the ball, but Tim Cole was literally kicking the balls into the stand, I promise you. But no, you don't take people's bags. It's just possessions. No, no, no. They should have took the strut, and the strut should have went and get the ball. That's why I personally feel like, or oh, you should have just pointed towards the guy who took the ball, and then the struck went and get him. So, we had one. Really, we had one there. Didn't look good at all, and I expect the guy to get in some trouble. Speaking of Tim Crow, though, gave his shirt to a Newcastle fan after the game yesterday. That's what football is all about. I couldn't care less about not winning the game yesterday. That's what I want to see in football. Hell, even relegation this season, as long as we're getting gestures like all the time, because that's what football is all about. Unity between clubs. Yes, on the day, of course, we want to beat each other, but after the match, we just get on like human beings. That's how it goes. And yeah, I love Tim Crow a bit. I would love to see him get a vote at the club once he retires. In terms of a football player, though, he's got a heart. He loves Newcastle still. Where is it? I get it out now. I've got his autograph, bought it last year for eBay. Don't regret that one bit. Love him. But yeah, it's really good to see him from Tim and Crowley again. Even though he's at Norwich City Football Club, he still has the time for the Castaneda fans, and that's what I love to see. Great serve, and he's still a good football player. More bad news for the Castaneda, unfortunately, about the new director of football. Doesn't look like it's going to happen into after the Jamie window, which I can, yeah, I think it's going to happen, to be honest. I feel like being 20th in the league, zero wins after 14 games in the Premier League. It's going to be hard to get some of these top director of footballers in at the minute. It's a nightmare. I personally felt like it should have been for the start of December, which is now. And it's not going to happen clearly. So, yeah, I'm concerned in terms of that. But we've got bigger problems with director of football. We on a football pitch is not good enough. Kieran Clark yesterday, I never ever want to see him play a game for the Castanet again. He completely sabotaged that match for us. Norwich City for 80 minutes had one extra player in Newcastle and they still didn't play well. Newcastle still had chances to win that game. And unfortunately, it just slipped away from us at the end. The bad guy, yes, people might have said it was a goalkeeping mistake, but I can't fault any of the players yesterday. The only player that we could blame yesterday was Kieran Clark because that is one of the worst bits of defender I've ever seen from a football player. And unfortunately now, we haven't beat Southampton at home, we haven't beat Leeds at home, we haven't beat Brentford at home, we haven't beat Norwich at home. That, for me, is relegation standard. If you look at the stats here, I mean, no team in our position has ever stayed in the Premier League. So, I'm not saying we would go down. I'll give you my prediction. I'll give you my opinion. But if we were to stay up this season, it would be a first in Premier League history. That's the prediction we are in now. Personally, I said in the video, I'll say it again. I do generally think the castle will get relegated. But there's still more than half this season to play. You never know. But that is facts. There's no predictions there or spoilers or anything. The stats prove that Newcastle will go down this season. We had to prove them wrong. Ryan Fraser speaks out about Steve Bruce and our people in Newcastle before Eddie Howe's appointment. I don't know how he just goes. I'm not going to slag off the previous manager when he goes and slags them off anyway. So, I mean, fair enough. But, uh, yeah. 
Exactly. When you've got these sort of football players that come out and just tell you how much better things are now, it just proves how bad the likes of Steve Bruce were. Again, when I was at the training ground in National Break, before the Manchester United away game, four times they trained in two weeks. Eddie Howe's first week in the class now tra trained six times during the National Break. Even this Saturday, they even trained the St James Park on this Saturday, ruthless by them. But that just shows how lazy the likes of Steve Bruce were. Yes, you can't just put the finger all on him. But he didn't care. He didn't care at all. And he put this mentality into the team. It's unfortunately led to the complete mess that we are at the minute. And we've still got to take responsibility now because we've got over half the season without him. But we still still got to put some the finger on him. And uh, yeah, it's just tragic. And this football club has been a mess. Thankfully, now the rebuilding can begin. Just whether that will be in the Premier League or the Championship is a different question. But I think it would just be more embarrassing if we go down than anything. I don't think it would be actually a problem for the future. If we went down with Steve Bruce, I generally think we could have had a chance of not coming up next season. But with the money we've got, with the club we've got, the cast is too big in the championship, really, aren't we? So there's no excuses. We've got to come back straight away if we were to get relegated. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video there for all your cast and news. I did a live stream with Football Brownie earlier on, half an hour live stream. And yeah, I thought I'd put on a clip of it at the end because the comments he said towards me is just, wow, it's just overwhelming. I mean, I really do appreciate how you feel, mate. Thank you. And uh, yeah, this is why I love doing YouTube. I love doing YouTube, make people happy. I love doing YouTube to make people want to go on YouTube and try it themselves. That's what I do. I don't want people to assume I'm just out here for money. Of course not. I tried six years before I even think about money from it. So yeah, I do really appreciate your comment, mate. Make sure I go check them out, guys. It really, it really would mean a lot to me. But anyway, though, keep it up, mate. I keep in touch. And uh, without further ado, I'll put the clip on now. But I'll see you on the next video, guys. And see, around about the same time, I was having uh, issues. Uh, because of uh, certain individuals. I'm 43 years old. Um, and I have told you this, Ed. Um, I was watching... I was watching uh, how you got over the hurdle of having a boost online. Uh, because I, I sometimes I'm too touchy. You know? Um, and I have to... I have to say this i looked up to you how you done it and i i i spoke to my i told myself come on ad you're 43 years old this you you're twice the age of adam pearson and this is how he's got over it and he's moved on i'll be honest with you man watching your videos during that time give me the courage to dust myself down move on and just leave toxic people behind in my life, if I'm honest with you, Matt. And uh, for that, I want to apologize. I, I want to apologize. I want to I wanna thank you, man, because um, I can suffer at times with, uh, with depression. And that's with a link of having trolls or having a boost online does get me down to the lowest level people can uh, imagine. But I want to thank you from my heart, and my family wants to thank you from my heart, mate, because we were watching you get over the troll abuse and the abuse online. And uh, I don't think you realise just how many people, like myself or other smaller YouTubers, you help just by showing that you can beat the trolls.